Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So, yes, I know I have been busy spilling tea. All weekend long, I am trying to get back in my mode of consistently dropping content. As you guys know, it's been a lot for me this spring and summer with the move and trying to sell the other house and getting ready for the house for me. It's been a lot. So I think I'm back on schedule now. So hope you guys are enjoying all this extra content. So anyhow, boy, oh boy, when I tell you I have been tagged in this story so many times on Discord and on social media, everybody's been wanting me to talk about this. So we got to talk about the Aubrey O'Day situation. So if you guys remember, um, I had did a live stream the other day about Diddy giving back the publishing because a lot of folks wanted me to give my opinion on that. And I went in. I told y'all it was a hollow gesture. He was full of crap. Uh, they're not making no money in streaming. He been sold them people's publishing. And I also broke down the situation with Justin Combs, basically making money off of Mace and several other artists while he was in Pampers and had nothing to do with the music. And when I tell you Aubrey O'Day's new interview that she did with OnlyStans, she basically confirmed and reiterated everything I said on my live stream. Like, yo, T. Grodamas was blown away. I'm like, for somebody who's not really in the industry, I just have a good feeling of what's going on behind the scenes. So what I want to do first is play you guys um, some snippets from my live stream. We're going to do a flashback. We ain't had a flashback in a while, okay? And then I'm going to play you guys everything everything that Aubrey O'Day had to say, okay? So y'all go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Reports Combs is re Sean Combs is his full name, of course. He's reassigning the music publishing rights to artists who helped make his record label Bad Boy Records into what it is today. Artists who are expected to get their publishing rights back include the notorious B.I.G.'s estate, Faith Evans, and Mace. The assets of those rights are reported to be worth millions of dollars. Let me tell y'all something. I'm not boosted or impressed by this gesture. Okay, let's start there. Him giving back publishing to mu half the music that's in this publishing is older than most of y'all in this chat. Half y'all don't know these damn songs. Y'all ain't gonna go back and listen to no damn Carl Thomas, G Depp. And let's not forget, he sold the popular songs. Did we forget that? He sold a lot of the very popular publishing already. And let's not forget, he sold the popular songs. Did we forget that? These are the bits and crumbs. Also, okay, why everybody's trying to praise him like he's really done something, aren't these modern day artists crying about streams and how they don't make any money from streams? When he had the publishing, that is when people were making money off of physical disc, records, CDs, cassette tapes. That, that was the real bread and butter. Nobody's making money from streaming. They won't stop crying about the shit every other month. They don't make money off of streaming. So how is this helping artists? This was a hollow gesture. Can we stop acting like Diddy is like this great businessman? Diddy is just the face of a bunch of businesses. He's the face of, you know so-called black wealth but if he's really such a savvy businessman why is he having all these issues with these liquor companies remember he acted like he owned Ciroc he acted like he owned this new liquor brand and they got rid of him he started crying about racism but I thought you was a boss why do you have to sign your name and likeness and brand and attach it to an already built company. So people my age, we don't support anything Diddy puts out. We'll sip it for free on Twitter. We'll do commentary, but I'm not gonna go stream anything that Diddy puts out. So he has to tap into the young kids who don't know him. See, my kids, they know him as Brother Love. 
And me and my kids have gotten into arguments. Why are you so mean? He's brother love. I'm like, simmer down. Y'all just got here. We've been here. We watched Brother Love. We watched him be Puffy and Diddy. We watched him exploit the making of the band Kids. Wayne forgot about, you know, Mysterious and all these kids who were used and thrown to the side. So he has to, you know, look good for you guys, for the younger generation, because you guys are the ones who stream music. You know, we'll download, you know, we'll listen if it comes up on our playlist. But we're not, I don't have a streaming farm in my house. I'm not going to play one song over and over again to get my faves to number one. I have better shit to do. And because of people like me and others who have told the truth about him, the youth, you know, they're kind of conflicted. They don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy or you know what. So he wants to now act like he's a good guy. Well, look, you guys, look, young people, you know, I'm giving everybody back their publishing, even though what it expired in two years anyways. And even though streaming, you don't really make no money off of streaming. And even though, you know, the heyday of Danny D. Kane, uh, uh, Day 26, um, Mace, Total, their heyday is long gone. No disrespect. You know, Mace is doing his thing now on podcasting with Cameron. But as far as music, his music, nobody's waking up saying, I want to, you know, I'm going to play a Mace song from 1997. Except for maybe me. But the average kid, they're not. Nobody's waking up to listen to Loon and 112. I am because I'm older. But the average, you know, 25 and under, they're not. They're just not. What you need to do is cut those people a check, billionaire. Cut them a check. Even if it's just a million dollars. Like, hey, I know I ate up all y'all's publishing. I know Justin had nothing to do with Mace's record. He was, he was in a damn pamper in the studio, but he got publishing credit. I know Justin had nothing to do with Mace's record. He was, he was in a damn pamper in the studio, but he got publishing credit. Even Justin was making money off of publishing. He had nothing to do with the songs. He wasn't no beat maker. He was in a pamper. Cut them a check, Diddy. He gave the rights back to a lot of bad boy artists. Any comments? Um, yeah, I'll talk about this. The floor is yours. So this one has been bittersweet for me because I'm... As I've gotten older, mm -hmm. I've let go of a lot of the trauma and I've learned to really appreciate some of the more personal, beautiful moments I've had with him. And he is the first person that gave me a platform to show my talent to the world. Um, you know, and that was at 17, I'm 39 now. So I have a hard time, I have a hard time talking about him before before it was no good. Now I'm feeling, I feel loving moments for moments that we had together. Mm -hmm. But this banner that he's painted himself with all weekend long, this has been the Labor Day talk in my world, that he's paying back all of the bad boy artists. Um, I just want to throw you the facts, okay? Sure. The deal that we were offered, and when I say we, not every artist got it. Like day 26 did not get it. But um, this is what it is. You can have your rights back um, to your music after Puff went under and somebody else bought our catalog. So this is long after we have two double platinum albums, $14, $15 an album from two million albums is, what is the math on that, $48 million? Yeah, something like that. I'm no mathematician, but maybe. So, so $48 million somebody made on me. Yeah. I did not make anything. When I said I did Christine Aguilera for free, I didn't do Christine Aguilera for free, but the record label recouped it all. We were in debt at the end of that tour. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, so I worked for free for the first six, seven years of my career, basically, and also MTV was not paying us. And this is another part that I have that I feel some kind of way about because MTV since then in these, these recent years has brought back every big cult show, meaning it had millions of followers and it was at least six seasons, right? Yeah. Making the Band is one of those. They brought back Real World. They brought back Jersey Shore. They brought back Laguna Beach. Making the Band is the only one that they did not bring back. 
And Making the Band is the only cult MTV show that made that network, one of them, that they have never played in one rerun. Not one rerun. So I'd like to know why. And if it has something to do with Diddy, then again, what I'm wondering is when we're not being, when the deal is, when this benevolent man who's just now had a change of heart and has decided to pay us as talent and also as pub, as writers, we're credited um, in, in, with publishing. Um, so basically, we only get the amounts due since Sony bought our catalog. So basically, we only get the amounts due since Sony bought our catalog. Okay. So streaming for the past couple years. It's about $800, $900, some in the hundreds, okay? And in order to get that, I have to release him for any claims or wrongdoings or actions prior to the date of the release. I have to sign an NDA that I will never disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, or Justin Combs Music, or EMI, or Sony ever in public. I have to sign an NDA that I will never disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, or Justin Combs Music, or EMI, or Sony ever in public. So that you just got recently for this thing? I got it a few months ago when okay, he started doing what's this. In the news now. So what's happening is artists, some of them, not all of them, are being given streaming royalties and ownership back over our publishing on songs that we wrote um, at a time when you know that you have to stream a song a million times to make point a, a cent. Yeah. Okay. It, it's hundreds of dollars. And me as somebody that's a girl's girl, I hit everyone in my group and said, absolutely do not take this deal. I can get us a show on Hulu right now and I'm talking about boy bands and girl gang because you have to realize there's a handful, two handfuls at most of boy and girl bands that had a platinum albums, two platinum albums yep. that were that and that will never happen again. Music nowadays is run by TikTok and you can maybe get a song to chart well. Albums aren't being made anymore. There aren't conceptual albums like Christina was doing, like Justin was doing. You're not those don't sell. It's a singles market game and it's a it's a gimmick game at best. If you were to sign that NDA, would then that prohibit you from taking a deal where it's like you get a show about the I would past? never be able to do, I would like to do a documentary for Hulu or Netflix or Amazon, a streaming site no, on no. boy band and girl bands. I, I have a bunch of members from a lot of very boy bands that fit the criteria of a certain amount of, of status. Yeah. Platinum albums, awards, etc., Grammys, same with girls. The stories that we have to tell during a time in music where there were gatekeepers, there were people that owned labels like Puff running things, and the way that the divisions and the divisiveness occurred, and the things that we experienced between each other and us against the system are fucking insane. And most people that have had to go through those types of things, like the real ways the Kardashians got to where they got, Ray J tried exposing a lot of that, they're still acting like that Ray J didn't expose them and that their Hulu show is all real. They don't have to really even notice Ray J because he doesn't come close to them. But what Ray J said was the truth and he proved it with facts. So at the end of the day, we're all just willing to turn a blind eye. Diddy is just literally known as the guy that doesn't pay his artists. And it's funny, and then you move on and you like something that he did on TikTok because he's funny. But for people that worked for six years of their life and, and entered an industry where somebody made, what, $48 million? dollars. And we didn't even see a penny of that. And we were in thongs and five-inch heels for years of our lives on stage. And not... Not any of it did we see. And the measly amount of change that MTV paid us, we don't even get to feel any benefit of that because they never brought the show back and they don't play it in reruns. So we can't even get the hype of 
oh, hey, I remember this. They're cult classics. Let me hire her for something. Yeah. Like all of them got, right? Mm -hmm. Jersey Shore kids are making millions of dollars. We were talented kids plucked out of oblivion, and we all had a fucking dream to be at Madison Square Garden and perform, which we got to. And we were not expected to get there. And we're all incredibly talented, every single one of us. So to me, when I read this, I'm basically feeling like you're presenting yourself as the benevolent God that's giving everybody back their music. You've turned down millions of dollars to give the millions back to the people. This is the honest to God you can read from our attorney. Yeah. This is the honest to God agreement of what I'm being offered. A few hundred dollars to sign away my rights to ever tell the story of what I went through again. And there's not going to be an era of girl and guy groups like that ever again with the way that music has transitioned. And I don't know if it will go back ever again to anything that's credible. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really and, see it. And there's a story there. And Hulu tells those stories. And, and, and streaming, so Netflix tells those stories. And there's so many paychecks. I offered girls, I called all of them. I offered some of the girls, hey, if you need eight, nine hundred bucks, I'll give it to you. Don't sign this. This is just a way to get you to never be able to publicly speak about what we have experienced. And, the, and, and to my knowledge, allegedly, there's only two of us from Danity Kane that did not sign this deal. All right, so you guys just watch those clips. It is very interesting how this man couldn't just cut them a check, but instead promised them publishing that really, like I said, with the streaming and the way streaming goes, it's very hard to recoup that money. Nobody's really checking for old Danny Decane songs from 2007, okay? Let's keep that real. And I was a fan of Danny Decane. I bought their album. I bought Day 26's album. I had Making the Band's album. I had all of these albums and I love I had I loved their songs. Those girls could sing. We watched them go through this bootleg boot camp to try and make it to the top. And to see how everything ended years later is just sad. I see a lot of people who are confused about the whole, you know, why would he want them to sign an NDA saying that they can never disparage Puffy, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, or Justin Combs? A lot of people do not understand why Justin Combs is in there, okay? And if you go back and you watch my breakdown, I did two videos on the Puff and May situation, one in 2020 and one in 2021, I believe, maybe 2022. Um, and I broke that down in there. Justin Combs, from the time he was a tot, has been making money off of publishing off of all of these artists because that's a hustle that a lot of people do, right? In order to create generational wealth, they'll put their kids' names on an album, even though they have nothing to do with it. DJ Khaled does it with Assad. Uh, Beyonce has done it with Blue Ivy. Even though they really don't have nothing to do with the music, it's another way to keep the money in the family. So instead of giving that publishing to somebody else and helping build somebody else's generational wealth, you can just put your kid's name on the publishing and then they can get money. You know, they can get all future revenue. So Justin has been living good off of all these people's music and publishing that he had nothing to do with. That is why he is a part of the NDA. Diddy doesn't want anybody dragging Justin, okay? Mace was one of the first people to really put it out there. It, it just shows you all the shady shit that goes on. I really believe the reason why Diddy was trying to get all these people their publishing back was to look good for this younger generation. Like I said in my live stream, us older folks, I'm not checking for his new album. I don't care how much they try and say, oh, every song's a bop, oh, the features, oh, it's it's reminiscent of the 90s and the early 2000s. Not interested. I'm not supporting anything that Diddy, Puffy, Brother Love, whatever he chooses to call himself, chooses to put out. Just got that call one day from God, and she was like, it's, it's time, and I was like, it's time. And I was like, I wanna make, I wanna make R&B. Yo, sometimes you gotta go through the dark to manifest. If you had to do one thing for the rest of your life, what would you do? And that would be make music. That was, would it bring you joy? That would be make music. Would it help you to have a positive effect on the world? And that would be music. And I wasn't doing music. And so from that second on, I jumped head first into this project. Na, 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 na. Artists wanted to be a part of the project. You know, everybody was calling like, can I be a part of the Love album? So even me getting people, it was like, every, nobody made me 
wait more than like 30 seconds for an answer. Because he has screwed over too many black artists, okay? Keep that in mind. Black artists. The majority of people on the Bad Boy label were black artists. And he screwed them all over. He also screwed over white artists as well. He screwed over those young boys, B12, I think that was their name. Just so many people were screwed over by him. And now he wants everybody to support his album? I think not. And see, the problem is now Diddy is nervous because, see, before, when it was television, before social media, people, you know, rumbled in the streets. People had things to say about him. But it didn't go anywhere global. It was all kitchen table talk. Well, now you got a new generation of folks. You got the old folks coming back, spilling all types of DDT from the 90s and the 2000s thousands and Biggie and everything else. You have the Gene Deals, you have the Mark Curry's. So now the younger generation is listening to guys like this, like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that was going on. And you have the older generation listening to guys like that, like, yeah, you're basically retelling what we've been talking about for years in the hood. So all of these stories about him are not making him look good on social media. There are more negative stories about Diddy and his family on YouTube than there are positive stories. So he's trying to change that. He's trying to change his reputation by changing his name to Brother Love, by trying to give back this publishing, but not being honest about it. Let's also keep it real. Diddy is also struggling. I'm not saying he's going broke because the man has long money, but again, it's easy to make money. Like I always tell y'all, everybody can make money. You can make a million dollars, but can you keep money? Can you invest it properly? Do you know what to do with it? And I think Diddy's money is not coming in the way it used to come in before. Let's not forget, he's been in a current battle right now with these liquor companies. Recently, this year, June 27th of 2023, uh, Diago ended its 15-year partnership with Diddy following a lawsuit. Diddy caught himself trying to sue. Diddy accused Diego of failing to market his spirits, which include Ciroc Vodka. And he was saying that the way that they marketed um, George Clooney's, who founded Casamigos and who amassed a billion dollars from his partnership with Diego, he felt like it wasn't fair that George Clooney made all this money but Diddy has been with Diego for 15 years and he hasn't made a fraction of what George Clooney made. So he was very upset that Ciroc was not being, you know, promoted in the same way as Casamigos. Diddy has cried racism, racial discrimination over Diego's $1 billion acquisition of competing tequila brand Casamigos, which is a brand that was founded by actor George Clooney. And in his racial discrimination plea, claiming that he has been receiving the proper finances. Well, the company, Diego, which actually owns the Ciroc brand, recently stated that they've tried to salvage their broken relationship with, with Mr. Combs, and they even funded the purchase of De Leon, which is a tequila brand from the rapper Sean P. Diddy Combs. And uh, so I guess George Clooney is a part of this uh, Racial discrimination claim. Now, of course, he's using a woke white liptar lawyer to help fight, you know, discrimination against the evil executives, which is this person. So eventually Diego was like, you know what? We don't need this. We got people like George Clooney who are bringing us billions. OK, you have a shitty reputation. You're crying out about racism. We're done. And they pulled the plug. So now he no longer has that so-called lucrative partnership, you know, with uh, Ciroc and Diego. But my thing is, like I said in my video, if this man is a so-called billionaire that y'all keep proclaiming him to be, why does he not own his own distillery? Why has he been under a label getting a fraction of the profits for 15 years? He could have built and bottled his whole entire brand if he was really serious about it. See, a lot of these celebrities, they really don't want to build stuff from the ground up. They just want to white label stuff and put their name on it. But really, it's a whole corporation behind it. So that was a big bag for him lost. They parted ways because they're like, you're not about to sue us and accuse us of racism. Get the fuck out of here. We've been doing this for years. You know what I'm saying? We're the ones who run this. And if you don't like it, move around. So he was very upset about the Ciroc situation, the De Leon to that he launched in 2009, he felt like it was not being pushed in the same way as Casamigos and it blew up in his face. So that was a bag loss. They dropped him. Um, so now his only real revenue that can keep coming in is music. Hence him being on the MTV Awards at the VMAs for some award that I don't think I've really heard of before, but okay. Um, he was there. 
Uh, you notice it was just his kids performing with him. He's winning some type of global icon award, but not one celebrity from Bad Boy was on stage performing with him. He had the baby on there cosplaying Mace and, you know, rapping Mace's verse. We know Mace wasn't going to go up on there with him, but I mean, where was everybody else besides Keisha Cole? And I don't think Keisha Cole was ever signed to Bad Boy, but I don't know, child. But I just feel like this whole situation just goes to confirm everything I have suspected about Diddy and this publishing, that it wasn't given out in good faith. It was given out because the money is running low. Again, not saying he's going broke. Diddy has more money than I can ever dream of, okay? So I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that revenue stream is not hitting like it was in the 99s and the 2000s. When he had all that publishing, the music was fresh, he had the TV show. I mean, he made money off of the backs of all of these people. And I believe the reason why they will never play Making of the Band in rerun, because you're going to find little clips on, you know, Line or on TikTok. The reason why they won't is because in this day and age, it would make Diddy look bad. And I believe because Diddy was like the executive producer that he has made it where they cannot show the reruns. Because think about it. At least once a year, that video of the Day 26 boys, you know, singing for a bed. Remember, they're all there. They're all singing because they just want a bed. Sing, sing to him. Don't sing the song to him. Let him hear you. Let him know you're coming to get his bed, man. You acting so strange, yeah. Spinning around in the world. All the we go. That goes viral and people drag Diddy every time that goes viral. If y'all really watched this show, like when we were growing up, there were so many things, like even looking back on it, that was very, very problematic. But we didn't know, we were young. Your fam, Puffy just told us to go to the store in Brooklyn and bring him back a cheesecake and walk. see me on TV, you know, and everybody wanted to be a part of this show. You know, everybody wanted to be on Making the Band. We all had dreams of being rappers and singers and entertainers and things like that. Even when he fired Aubrey O'Day and I go back and I watch that clip, you could tell there was more to it. When I was younger, I didn't pick up on it. I, I, you know, I was more or less like, okay, she did change her style. She's becoming a lot more fast compared to the other girls. She got breast implants, you know, yada, 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 because that's how Diddy was kind of spinning it. Like you're ruining, you know, the group's image. But when you go back and really watch it, it seemed like he was really irritated and it was a lot deeper than her ruining quote unquote the group's image it seemed like there was some type of you know possible sexual frustration if you get my meaning maybe she wasn't going the way he wanted her to go you know what i'm saying you want to show all your skin you you neck you want to be naked but the whole concept of identity came was like when it comes together it's one puff's going hard on the group and then all of a sudden he singles me out and starts going on and on about how unhappy he is with me and i just feel like nothing that i do he's ever happy with. can i ask a question how, what do you want to look like though do you want to well, look I like a playboy on... playmate do you want to look like you Puff, i'm done with all of that no 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 like... what do you want to look okay. like though i'll tell what you what do you want to look I'll like though? i'll tell you i'll tell you I'm not focused on me, 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 me. I'm focused on what this group should look like and how I should fit in this situation. You like big hair, though. I don't you like You do hair. like big hair. You like, like big hair. Puff, you you like, a, look, you like a lot of makeup and all that. And she's even alluded to this in certain interviews that, you know, he was throwing signs and feelers and she wasn't trying to, you know, sleep with the boss. Thing you could imagine why somebody would want to fire somebody. Can you give us a little more? <laughs> um, I wasn't willing to uh, do what w was expected of me. Mm. Not talent-wise, but in other areas. Mm -hmm. And were other girls doing? I was the only one that was in those types of positions. Wow. When you look back on that, how does that make you feel? You know, I have such a love-hate with it all because I don't think I would have been able to be so successful in so many other areas had I not been trained under Diddy. Mm -hmm. He was the hardest person that you can work for and it was torture. And not the work part of it, but the other stuff. Mind games, like just 
all the girls were so divided and the men and the people running it were the, had their hands in it, mm -hmm. moving everything. Um, there was a lot of betrayal. There was a lot of lies. There was a lot of, um, you know, when you're, when you're young and impressionable and you're just, we understand our beauty as women through the eyes of the people observing us. Well, who's observing us? Men. So we learn our beauty through a man's eye, which is, is very subjective. So it's, it's difficult when you're that young to understand your worth as a woman through the men that I was around. And that was very traumatic. I don't think any of us have healed from that. Diddy would be like, you're not hot anymore. Like what happened? You don't have anything like you don't have any curves. You're looking like just, you're not looking like I can't get people to think that you're my good looking person. And there was no me too at that time. There was no protecting anyone at that mm -hmm. time. You signed a million NDAs and a million contracts that took away all your rights. So you really were operating in an, an environment that you had no control in. And the way he went in on her, when I go back and I watch that scene, it is really sad, but I'm really glad that Aubrey did not sign and that Aubrey kept it real. And she's been keeping it real for years now. You know, it's just really sad. People need to pay folks what they are owed. You know, I've done deep dives on music writing and how writing music, it's not easy. You know, it's a spiritual process. Um, you're putting your heart and soul into this. And this is why now a lot of writers are no longer you know, wanting to be behind the scenes. Now they want to be in front of the camera. Why should I keep writing for Ariana Grande and, you know, this celebrity and that celebrity and get pennies on the dollar when I can sing, I can write, I'm just going to be my own little celebrity. And now you're having more writers come up in the forefront because people are tired of the industry games. And one thing I would say about the internet, it has made it an equal playing field. You know, I may not be a big fan of Sexy Red, but there's no way she could have made it in the industry 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? The internet has leveled the playing field. And now there's a way for everybody to come on and be known and have a soapbox. Regardless if it's good or bad, they're able to have a soapbox. They're able to be heard. If it was not for the internet, I would not have a platform. You know what I'm saying? I'm not stereotypically pretty. I'm not ambiguous. Nobody would care what I had to say. But because of the internet and platforms like YouTube, I can talk, you know what I'm saying? I can represent myself. And so there's not all these gatekeepers like there was. And I think that's why I think a lot of industry people are really upset with the freedoms that are had on the internet and the way that these celebs are able to tell their stories now on different platforms. Because even the media gatekeepers are somewhat dying off. People don't have to run to, you know, places like Revolt TV, Breakfast Club, and other things. Now, you know, everybody has a podcast. Everybody has some type of media company. That only stands channel only has like 9,000 subscribers and, and he was able to get the tea from Aubrey O'Day. So they don't have to go on CNN and, you know, Fox News. They can literally come on these smaller platforms and go viral. And I'm here for it. We got to get rid of the gatekeepers. You know what I'm saying? We need to make this fair. Everybody who wants to, you know, have a voice or be a part of the entertainment system, they should be able to make their money. If somebody is writing, pay them fairly. If somebody's a musician, pay them fairly. It's not okay that these labels are getting millions of dollars and the people who are out here touring and, you know, doing all the quote unquote slave labor are getting paid pennies. But again, that also happens because you're also trading your monetary value for fame. That's why I've always told y'all there's way more money behind the scenes than in front of the camera. I've always told you guys that being a producer, being an executive, the faces that you don't see, those are the folks who make the real money. The folks that you see in music videos and your favorite rapper, they're not living that trife life. Okay. So people need to keep that in mind. Once you choose fame over money, that's what they're going to pay you in. They're going to pay you in fame. These kids who went on making of the band, they traded money for fame. They got fame and notoriety. But fast forward 20 years later, where are they? A lot of them are struggling. A lot of them are having mental health breakdowns. Making that video, bro, was saying, I've been through, I've been through pain, bro, since the show. It ain't got nothing to do with, I ain't saying I'm broke. I ain't broke, I, ain't, I can't claim that. I can't claim to be broke. But I ain't got a dollar from you. I ain't got a dollar from you. You hear me? That's all I'm saying. You made 100 million off a of nigga, you hear me? And if I'm saying anything wrong, man, people, y'all tell me, man, because I, I don't, don't make this about bashing, did it's not about bashing, did it.
Lord Chuck C, man. Say it ain't so. Chopper arrested for sex trafficking? Former MTV Making the Band star Chopper has been busted for sex trafficking, with law enforcement accusing him of being a pimp. According to Legal Doc, undercover vice detective in Nevada posing as sex workers jumped in the Chopper's DM on Instagram. After DMing back and forth and a phone conversation, Chopper asked the vice undercover agents to join his stable. Chopper let the undercover t detective know that they were part of his stable and ordered them to fly out to North Carolina to visit him. Because they were exploited so bad on television. It wasn't just the making of the band kids, but a lot of people on reality television. Look how now they're all running to Sue Bravo, Bethany and others, and they're talking about exportation and this and that. But again, you traded that for fame. So that is the byproduct of fame, is that you're not going to be paid well because you want to be famous. So yes, child, the rabbit hole goes deep, honey. But let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I want to know y'all's thoughts on this entire situation concerning Aubrey O'Day, basically confirming everything I said in my live stream in this interview that she did with OnlyStans. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Please make sure to hit that like button. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Feel free to share the video. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.